Shiva, Faculty of Physics. I hope you are doing well in your studies with these bricks. Today, in this episode, we are going to deal with one important topic that is how we can calculate the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. Okay. Before going to this episode, let us try to recall some important ideas regarding the conductor. So, conductor is the object where the electrons are allowed to move freely when compared with semiconductor as well as insulator. So, any excess charge given to the conductor easily spreads over the surface. Nothing but there is no chance for the charge in order to reside inside the conductor. That's why inside the conductor the electric field is always equal to zero. Again, the conductor surface always treated as equipotential surface. The lines that we are drawing to the surface of conductor always perpendicular to the that surface of the conductor. Simply to say, lines of force are always perpendicular to the surface of conductor. That's why whenever you are moving any object over the surface of conductor, the work done by that force is always equal to zero. So, in our including these points now, we will see one more simple concepts in order to understand this concept in this episode that we are going to discuss. Okay, first of all here, we are seeing two plates. Okay, so these two plates are conductors. So, for first plate, we are giving the charge down here Q1. Okay. So, for second plate, we are giving the charge Q. Okay, what is the charge now given for the first plate? For the first plate, the charge is given Q1. As well as for the second plate, the charge is given what? Q2. So, whatever may be, the charge that is either Q1 or Q2, given the plates of the conductor, completely resides where? On this surface. So, say, this side I am labeled as 1, this side I am labeled as 2, this one 3, this one again 4. So, what is the charge for 1? So, charge on the surface 1 is Q1 plus Q2 by 2, ok. Charge on the surface 2 is Q1 minus q2 by 2 charge on the surface 3 is q2 minus q1 by 2 charge on the surface 4 is q1 plus q2 by 2 so these 1 2 3 4 expressions we have derived with the help of the properties of conductor what is the property that we utilized here in order to obtain these expressions in our previous sessions is that resultant electric field inside the conductor is always equal to zero. Okay. Now by using that result only we are getting these two expressions. You can observe carefully 1 is equal to 4 na? 1 q1 plus q2 by 2, 4 also q1 plus q2 by 2. Nothing right. For the plates, the charge located on the outer surface, that is surface 1, surface 4 are equal. Similarly, the charge that you are seeing on the opposite sides, that is 2 and 3, are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So, Q1 minus Q2 by 2 is equal to minus of Q2 minus Q1 by 2. Na? That's why charge on the second surface is equal to negative of the charge on the third surface. Both of these charges that we are seeing opposite to the faces or against the faces are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. And 1 and 4 are equal in magnitude. Okay. Now we can see one special case here. What is that case? For this plate, okay, these plates also still conductors only. Now for this one I am giving plus Q. 
for this one I am giving minus q. Now use this formula. What is the value for the charge on the surface? So charge on the surface now we can write q1 plus q2 by 2 that is equal to q1 plus q, q2 minus q, q minus q by 2 that is 0 coulomb. Okay. So what is the charge on the surface now here? What is the charge we can write? This is containing no charge, 0 coulomb. Okay. Now what is the charge on the second surface? What is the formula for second one? Q1 minus Q2 by 2. So what is Q1? Q1 is equal to plus Q minus of what is Q2? Q2 also minus Q by 2 that is equal to 2Q by 2 that is equal to Q. Now what is the charge on the surface? So this is uh, plus Q. Okay? Nothing but the total charge that we are giving for the surface totally lying there on this side. There is no charge on this surface. Now in the same manner, let us try to calculate the charge on third surface as well as the charge on fourth surface. So what is the charge on third surface again? What is the formula? Q2 minus Q1 by 2 Q2 minus Q1 by 2 What is Q2? Q2 is minus Q What is Q1? Q1 there plus Q Minus Q minus Q by 2 It implies minus 2Q by 2 Nothing but minus Q Okay? So what is the charge on the surface now? This surface contains the charge minus Q. Now similarly, let us try to calculate the charge on force surface. Charge on the force surface, we can calculate with the help of this expression. That is Q1 plus Q2 by 2, nothing but Q minus Q by 2 is equal to 0 coulomb. Nothing but here also what is the charge we are seeing? 0 coulomb. So clearly what we are seeing here, if we have two plates, the two plates are made with conductors and for the two plates we are giving the charges that are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign, the entire charge must should be distributed on the faces that are against to each other. Okay. So in this situation we are giving plus q minus q that plus Q minus Q entirely distributed on the faces that are opposite to each other. So no charge on the surface as well as no charge on the surface. The only charge plus Q you are seeing here given for this plate. The only charge minus Q you are seeing here for this plate. Okay. Now with the help of this prerequisite, now you need to follow some subtime steps in order to calculate the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor. Now we can see what is the procedure here. So in procedure we have step 1. So what is step 1? So assume assume plus q comma minus q given to the plates. Okay. So what we are thinking now? First of all, you are seeing any system of two plates, u for one plate plus q and u minus q for another plate. This plus q and minus q automatically distributes there on the faces that are against the each other. Okay, this is step one. Now step two. So calculate. Calculate E bar with with you are know, using with the uh, use of gas lamp. Okay. So what is gas lamp? Gas lamp states for us this one. Integral 
e bar dot d a bar is equal to q enclosed by x bar. Okay. Second step says for us after giving the charge that are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign to the plates of capacitor. Calculate the total electric field magnitude that is formed between the plates of capacitor. So, in order to calculate that electric field between the plates of capacitor, we can utilize Gauss law. Gauss law says what for us? The net electric flux enclosed by the closure surface is always equal to 1 by epsilon naught times to the total charge enclosed by the surface. So, what is Gauss law? The net electric flux through the closure surface is always equal to 1 by epsilon naught times to the total charge enclosed by the surface. So, this is Gauss law. Here, E bar represents electric field vector, dA bar represents aerial vector, Q enclosed e represents the total charge enclosed by this closure surface. This integral indicates for us what type of integral? This is surface integral, nothing but the integration that we are performing over the entire closure surface. Okay. Now come to the step 3. So in step 3, we can calculate V. Okay. So find out V. V nothing but potential or voltage across the plates of capacitor. So, how can we find out the potential difference? In order to find out the potential difference, we can use this expression Vf minus Va is equal to minus integral of I to F E bar dot dr bar. Okay? So, Vi here high I indicates initial position, F indicates final position. Whenever you are moving from initial position to final position in the electric field, that change only here I am saying Vf minus Vi. This is always equal to the negative of this is line integral, where the line integral first for us to perform the integration from initial to final over the electric field, over the line integral of the electric field. E bar is the electric field vector, D bar is the displacement vector ok. So, use this expression to calculate what uh, the result of potential difference. Next step 4. So, after the calculation of potential difference then we can utilize this expression C is equal to Q by V in order to calculate the capacitance of this parallel plate capacitor ok. So, totally we need to have 4 steps in order to calculate capacitance of not only parallel plate capacitor, any capacitor that we can, the capacitance of any capacitor we can calculate. So, what are that 4 steps? First step, give charge that are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign to the plates of the capacitor. So, remember after giving the charge, the charge entirely distribute on the faces that are against to the surface of the conductor. Later, evaluate the electric field with the help of gas law. Gas law says for us, the electric flux through the closure surface is always equal to the 1 by epsilon naught times to the net charge enclosed by the gas and surface. By using Gauss law, we will calculate the electric field. After the calculation of electric field, so utilize the expression that is change in the electric potential is equal to negative of the line integral of dot product of electric field vector and displacement vector to calculate the potential difference. After the calculation of the potential difference, and use the expression C is equal to Q by V in order to calculate the capacitance. Okay. Now, come to this situation. Okay, here you are seeing two conductors that are plates. You can assume that is either rectangular or uh, 
circular whatever may be suppose here i am taking two plates that are rectangular plates okay so uh, even you are allowed to assume cuboid also no problem so now for this system you need to calculate what capacitance c okay you need to calculate the capacitance c in order to calculate the capacitance c now you can follow step by step carefully so first of all we can apply step 1 so according to the step 1 i am giving for this plate plus q for this plate minus q so where this charge entirely locates plus q now comes here minus q distributes okay there is no charge on the on the surface as well as on the surface okay now go for second step second step says for us calculate the e bar with the help of gauss law remember in order to apply the gauss law definitely we need to have gaussian surface gaussian surface how we can imagine gaussian surface always a closed surface on the gaussian surface you need to maintain the magnitude of the electric field is always constant in magnitude especially okay now here also i am choosing some gaussian surface okay so this is gaussian surface so on this gaussian surface now we are going to apply this equation okay so before going to apply this equation of gauss law so let us draw some free lines here so this is the electric free lines now okay now we will take some element here so say this is electric field now constant so this type of field lines we are seeing now here okay so this type of field lines here i am neglecting why these field lines are curved these field lines are curved so curved field lines now we can say it was responsible for the effect of fringing nothing but whenever you can take these lines also in your account then your field will become non uniform at that time calibration is typical tough in order to avoid the type of hard calibration now what we are doing here we are removing this fringing nothing but here what we can write neglect neglect fringing okay now we are going to neglect here fringing so after neglecting the fringing now apply the gas law so here totally we have how many faces we have now i am labeled that appearing faces this is one this is two this is three this is four okay now we will calculate for first surface what is the line surface integral of electric field okay so this is e bar e bar direction suppose i am taking one small element here on the surface one surface one that one looks like one flat shape na rectangular shape so here you are drawing the electric field vector in this manner so this is aerial vector da bar e bar da bar you are seeing in what direction e bar da bar you are seeing in the downward direction that's why e bar da bar both in the same direction then what we can write e da since both of these vectors are in the same direction we can write this is cos 0 degrees okay so later so cos 0 when e constant in our case that's why we are taking it is out of the surface integral now we can write e surface integral of da so surface integral of da simply indicates for us the sum of all small elements of da na 
So you are summing all small means here in this pattern. Then due to the addition of all ds, what we get here? It is equal to ea. Okay, nothing but the flux due to this surface and what I labeled that is ea. Okay, now c for surface two. So what is this value for surface two? So surface two, surface integral of e bar dot da bar. Okay. So see here, da bar direction rightward, e bar direction downward. That's why here what we can write e da cos 90 degrees. It will become zero. Okay. Surface integral of electric field to the surface two is zero. Now similarly see the surface three. So what is the value for this surface three? So again integral e bar dot d a bar. So here also. Uh, e bar downward direction, d a bar again in what direction you are seeing here, d a bar, e bar, okay, this is the direction of the e bar term, so e bar direction, d a bar direction, both are perpendicular, that's why same case is arising here also, then what we can write, that is equal to 0, now I am taking the upper surface, so suppose I am taking the upper surface, for the upper surface, what is the direction of the aerial vector? Direction of the aerial vector is up. But there is no electric field on this element. Since there is no electric field, electric flux also through this element will become zero. So that's why I am writing for fourth surface integral e bar dot da bar e bar by 0, result also what for us now, 0 means through the second surface, through the third surface, through the fourth surface, there is no electric flux, only electric flux that we are seeing through the first surface, okay. Now second step still over, no not over, still we need to calculate now. Uh, total flux. So, what is total flux here? So, total flux is equal to sum of all of these gels, na? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. What is this result? Ea plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. Simply it will become Ea. Okay, so this is the total flux. Now, according to the gas rule, what is the statement? Total flux is equal to Q enclosed by epsilon. So, what is the statement? This total flux must and should be equal to Q by epsilon naught. That is enclosed charge here Q only. Na? So, what is the charge now here given, here given the F plus Q? That plus Q totally located here only. That's why total charge here plus Q. That plus Q by epsilon naught is equal to Ea. Now, what is Q here? Q is equal to epsilon naught E into A. Okay, this is the charge lying on the inner surface of this conductor plate. Okay, this is step 2. Okay, so after going step 2 here, step 2 gives us the value of electric field now Q by epsilon naught into A. Otherwise, Q we can write epsilon naught into E into A water. That is not a problem for us. Now, go for step 3. Step 3 says to what for us? In order to evaluate the change in potential, use this expression. Remember, this is line integral, not surface integral. Line integral you are doing over the dot product of E bar and dr bar. Okay? Now, what we can write here? So, with their step 3 says to this expression now. So, Vf bar minus Vf minus Vi is equal to minus integral I to F E bar dot dr bar. Now, find out yourself one path in order to perform the integration. 
in order to perform the line integration find out a part then how can we see this part this part now i am taking from here to here what is this part this part for us part of what integration part of line integration okay so this is part of line integration now from where to where i am moving i am going from negative this surface to this surface this surface already we are seeing that negative charge nothing but lower potential this surface already we are seeing lying at positive charge nothing but more potential nothing but we are going from lower potential to higher potential lower starting higher final that's why this vf minus vi also we can say finally some positive value why higher minus lower we are saying that this result is positive that's why we can say it is v so v is equal to minus so suppose i am saying the distance between the plates of the capacitor is d now what we can write here 0 to d okay starting here i am taking 0 at this point we are taking as d now what we can write here so path integration upward so this is this path indicates dr dr direction upward but e bar direction downward dr upward e bar downward so e bar and dr bar are opposite to each other since e bar and dr bar are opposite to each other so what is the angle between e bar and dr bar angle between e bar and dr bar is 180 that's why here what we can write e dr cos 180 okay so what is the value for cos 180 cos 180 is minus 1 so minus minus will become plus nothing but 0 to d e dr so it will become e integral 0 to d dr it will become simply e into d so what is the value of e here so e here we can write as q by epsilon naught into a into d okay so v calculated na now after the calculation of v now we can go for step 4 step 4 here says what c is equal to q by v okay so now substitute the value of v here what we can write q by qd divided by epsilon naught into a so after substitution of this one what we will get here q q cancels c is equal to epsilon naught a by d this is the expression for the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor clearly we are seeing this capacitance independent of the charge this capacitance is independent of potential that we are seeing as v this capacitance just depends upon the geometry that is area of the plate as well as distance between the two plates suppose if i am maintaining a is greater than greater than d at that time c is what for us c is more okay so means how much you can minimize the distance between the two plates as well as how much you increase the area of each plate then the capacitance of the plate is increases that much more okay suppose initially we are assuming here a in instead of the a this gap we are filling with some dielectric having the constant k at that time now here what we can write the expression the expression in the presence of uh, dielectric is k epsilon naught a by d but remember this expression we can use when the gap between the two plates is completely filled with dielectrics at that time only we can utilize this formula this formula you are not allowed to use whenever the gap between the plates is partially filled with dielectric so completely filled with dielectric at that time only you apply this expression if there is no dielectric the gap between the two plates you are seeing simply as vacuum otherwise free space otherwise air at that time we can utilize this expression okay students so, 
in this session what we discussed we discussed about some properties of conductors thereafter we discussed about charge distribution uh, whenever two equal charges given to the plates how the charges are redistributed later we took one special case in that case there what we did we gave some we gave two charges that are equal in magnitude q q opposite sign at that time we try to understand how these charges we distribute on the plates later we discussed how can we calculate the capacitance of any capacitor not only palletted capacitor these rules we can apply easily for any type of capacitor so four rules there we discussed first rule giving the charge second rule calculation of p e third rule calculation of p fourth rule calculation of the capacitance these rules step by step we are applied to this uh, parallel plate capacitor so in during the calculation of the parallel plate capacitor we neglected fringing why we neglected fringing in order to make the electric field between the plates of the capacitor is uniform okay at the end we derived two expressions this is the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor whenever you are seeing the material between the plates of the die between the plates of the capacitor is air otherwise when the medium between the plates of the capacitor is completely dry dielectric we have this expression i hope you understood this lecture well in the next episode we will meet with one more new concept thank you for watching